HCAM TV Sports presents Hopkinton High School Boys Basketball, where tonight the Hillers will be taking on the Ashland Clockers. Hi, everybody. Mike Prate with Steve Spector, and we are at courtside here at the Athletic Center on a Friday night. And, Steve, uh, it's a very special night for the Hiller boys, as it was for the Hiller girls. It is senior night, and it really means a lot to the players and particularly the parents of the players. Absolutely, Mike, and the girls' game was great. They had a uh, senior night uh, uh, you know, acknowledgement uh, bef before the girls' game. We're going to do the same here with the boys, and you can just feel the energy in the, in the gym here at the Athletic Center. All right, we're going to turn it over to the public address, and you can hear what's going to happen for tonight's festivities. We're happy to have everybody here tonight. I'm going to introduce the cheerleading coach who's going to introduce her seniors, and we're gonna start by honoring the cheerleaders. So let's hear it for Coach Zwang. Thank you everyone, and good luck to both teams tonight. I wanna to start off by giving a huge congratulations and kudos to this team. We have 12 new athletes this season, brand new to our sport, and they've been working incredibly hard to keep the Hiller Cheer legacy alive, so congratulations, girls. This um, season, this year, these last four years would not have been possible without the amazing leadership, sportsmanship, heart, loyalty, commitment from our three amazing senior captains. So thank you girls for your commitment, your loyalty, and eight seasons of Hopkinton Varsity Cheer. As I call your name, please meet me in the center-ish um, for your parents, to meet your parents. Um, our first senior captain is Maya Gulfi, and she'll be met by her parents, Ellen, Jay, and her brother, Jack. Oh, he was coming. No, Jack. Jack, he's down. Our next senior captain is Michelle Horgan, and she'll be met with her parents, Jean, Jim, and her sister, Jamie. Certainly not least, our final senior, Senior Captain Brooke Beller, being met by her mom, Betsy. We should wait. Congratulations, girls, and good luck, boys. Okay, we also have four wonderful seniors that we're going to honor tonight. I'd like to thank all of the students who came and supported us during the season and all the parents at all, all the levels of play. Our first senior is Jack Vacari with his mom, Pam, and his dad, Ken. Our next senior is Connor Sarapusco with his mom, Melissa, and dad, Paul. Our next senior is Cooper Corby with his dad, Mike.
And our final senior is Nick Canal with his mom, Carmela, and his dad, Bob. Yeah, I want to thank everybody once again. Let's have a great game tonight. All right. Beautiful ceremony there, as it always is for the parents and players. You know, Steve, one of the things we were talking about off the air was, you know, how the parents have to, you know, withstand the years of youth basketball and then the, of course, luckily making a school team. And so, really, this is a culmination of the hard work that these kids put in. It's kind of a nice thing. Oh, well, that's exactly right, Mike. And, you know, both you and I have done a lot of coaching in town. and. And um, there's only a few slots to play varsity basketball in any town. So you start with a bunch of kids in fourth, fifth, sixth grade, and then start to weed themselves out. And, and that's, just, uh, that's just the way it goes. But the, the kids, both, you know, both Ashland and Hoppington here, these are the best of the best for their towns. And this is a big game for both teams. Well, then there's a basketball game, and it's coming next. And it, quite frankly, it is a do or die situation for this Hiller squad. They are standing at seven and 10 on the year. They must win out in order to make the tournament. They must be at 10 and 10 in order to do it. And tonight they go up against an Ashland team that beat them in January. And uh, the Ashland team, although with a record of five and 11, would love to play spoiler against this Hiller chance to get into the tournament. No question, Mike, and, and you know, as I said in the, in the girls' game, Ashland Hoppington is a is a huge rivalry, and is you know I think I think the five and eleven record for Ashland is probably a little deflated, and you know they've been in a lot of close games. They got you know they're going to come to play here. This is a big game for them. They're not going to they're not going to be able to make the playoffs. So this is a this is essentially a playoff game for them. Well, the Hillers come off a victory over the Bellingham Blackhawks, and they barely got that with a score of fifty to forty eight. That game, junior uh, forward. Uh, so, uh, Austin O'Dell ended up was the leading scorer for the Hills with 13 points and he had 10 rebounds go along. The senior, Nick Canal with 11 points and he had eight rebounds also. So for Steve, as we talk about what's going to happen here, first you got to take care of business. So you got to beat a 5-11 and 11 team as you just pointed out. The rivalry between these two towns, everybody watching knows, you know, the rivalry for, the, for these two squads and you really have to focus because you can't think about the next game you really have to take care of business here tonight against the Clockers. I mean, yeah, exactly. And, Mike, and, you know, if the Hillers look ahead to the, even the second half, that's not going to be a good thing. They, they really need to stay focused. They've lost a couple of tough ones. That I'm sure they'd love to get that first Ashland game back. I think they had, had the game, you know, that was a close game, as I recall. And, um, you know, on any given night, as they say, anything could happen. So uh, I'm sure they, you know, looking at the gym, it's completely full. And uh, in, in, in our past experience, usually the, it's a pretty uh, loud and fun, all in good fun, obviously. But they can get nasty out here. They, you know, they, they, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. It's Friday night, big Friday night game here. Yeah, there was, uh, Steve just mentioned to you folks uh, watching, the uh, Hillers and Clockers played in January, and it was a foul fest. And as a matter of fact, the Hillers shot pretty poor from the free throw line. And uh, also in that game, they only converted on two field goals in the fourth quarter. So the Ashland defense clamped down on Hopkinton, but uh, that was on January 15th, so the Hillers really looking to uh, right the ship against this clocker team. Hopkinton, uh, 
with a 7-10 and 10 record. They're also 7-10 and 10 in the TVL. We're going to listen to the public address announcer as we go back to uh, the public address announcer listening for the national anthem and introductions. Good evening and welcome to Hopkinton High School for tonight's boys varsity basketball game against the Ashland Clockers. The Tri-Valley League is committed to the highest ideals of sportsmanship and establishing a healthy environment of interscholastic competition. The league will not tolerate negative statements or actions directed towards competitors, game officials, or fans in attendance. Such actions include taunting, trash talking, and the berating of players or officials. The Tri-Valley League has adopted a zero tolerance policy. Warnings will not be issued, offenders will be ejected. Please respect all decisions made by the officials. Please respect fans, coaches, participants, and opponents alike. And now, the lineups for this evening's games. For the Ashland Clockers, at guard, number four, senior, Max Feinberg. At guard, number five, senior, Mitch Porter. At guard, number 11, senior, Christian Van Cleef. At guard, number 32, senior, Donovan Prasinski. At forward, number 34, senior, Spencer Robodeau. Coaches for the Ashland Clarkers, Mark Champagne, Steve Linehan, and William Graham. And for the now your hometown Hawkinson Hillers. At guard, number 14. Oh, sorry. At forward, number 30, junior Jimmy Adams. <laughs> at guard, number 14, senior Connor Sarapusco. At guard, number 15, senior Jack Vacari. At guard, number 23, senior Cooper Corby. And at forward, number 34, senior Nick Canal. The Hillers are managed by Caroline Coffey, Julia Kraft, and Drew Mokler. Coaches for the Hillers, Tom Keen and Chris Banks. Would you all please rise for our national anthem? Okay, the national anthem here at the Athletic Center, and it was performed by the high school pep band, and that's a nice, nice touch here on senior night also, and uh, as we get set for tonight's contest between the Clockers and the Hillers, it is a packed crowd tonight, as Steve mentioned in the opening, and that's because tonight is also youth basketball night. The school, if you play on a youth basketball team in Hopkinton, you uh, get free admission tonight. Wow, I wish I'd known that. I would have worn my shirt <laughs> from, uh, from years ago. Now the Hillers with their 7-10 and 10 record need a win, as we said in the opener. They are starting five seniors tonight. And here we go with the jump as Canal easily gets up and gets it. And here's Corby now with the ball. Corby is double teamed as he pushes the sideline, throws it in, but he can't get it to anybody. 
and the clockers will bring it up. This is Mitch Porter. Porter, he goes over to the sideline. Now cross court, now outside to Spencer. Robito takes a three, misses, and it's rebounded by Jack Ficari. The clockers are starting four, four guards uh, in, a, in a, you know, five seniors, four of them are guards. There's a blocking Ooh. foul against one of the clockers. It looks like it's number 34, Spencer Robito. There is no clock running. The time on the clock isn't, there it is. There we go, it is on Robido. Jack Vicari having a good season and uh, really uh, one of the best athletes to come through Hopkinton High. Everything, every sport he plays, he's, he's the man. So uh, we hope, hopefully he'll get a big game for him tonight. Well, the Clockers have a number 31 and it's not on their roster. So we <laughs> apologize for that. We will find out at halftime. All right, here's uh, Feinberg gets it up now to Robidoux. And Robidoux pulls it back. And he goes back up top to Porter. Porter now looking to go inside. He does. Outside. And it's stolen away. Here's Vakari. Puts it up off the right hand, and it's no good. And he slides off out of bounds. That's kind of a weird fall there. And the clockers race back with Przinski now. Donovan Przinski, the senior. And now he gets it back up top. Well, off the side it goes. And that's 31. Across court to him. He's open for a three. And it rims. It doesn't even touch rim. And actually, Corey has it now. Looking to push the ball up court. Vakari ahead of the field. He puts it up a right hand. He actually dishes it off. And now Corby looking to drive. And he puts it up. And he is blocked. And it's into the hands of Adams. Adams has it go off him. But it's a, a grabbing foul by Robidu. And that, I think, is going to be his second. Kind of a frantic uh, pace here, Mike, up and down, kind of scrappy. Minute and a half in, we got one point on the board. Uh, it. Yeah, you're, yeah, right, Steve. It's kind of disoriented, actually. And here, a substitution now. Guillermo Diaz, the freshman, who had a really good game against this Hiller team. When they met in January, Diaz had 10 points and six rebounds. Inside to Adams, off glass, and it's good. <laughs> and the Hillers are pressing. Diaz gets it over the court. Now here's Feinberg, pulls up jumper, and it goes in. Nice shot by Feinberg. He's one of the better players on the clock or team. Here's Canale ahead of the field. He looks to dunk, Ooh. but he goes off glass <laughs> instead. Kind of anticipating the dunk there at six foot five or whatever he is. Yeah, typically, you're right. He gets ahead of the field. He puts one in, but he was up by three now. Good double team. Now cross court it goes, and it's handled by Porter. Porter drive, pull up jumper, and the key is no good, and it's rebounded back to Porter. Went through the hands of a couple of Hillers. And now here's a three ball by 31. He misses it. We're going to call him 31 until they find out. Okay. We don't really have a choice. <laughs> right. I'm up with a fictitious name if you'd like. But I don't um, see anybody on the Ashland side. We can yell. The turnaround jumper by Canal is short, but a foul. Kind of a late foul. Would yeah, it was kind of. You're right, Steve. That ball hit the rim. And then the foul was called. Right, it was a little bit off. The timing was different. It's going to be a shooting foul as Canal will go to the free throw line. And he makes the first. Very respectful crowd, Mike, giving him this silent like, treatment. Yeah, or whatever, almost right? like a, a putting green. It's so quiet around here during the, foul, the free throws, which is uh, hopefully helping Nick uh, with his concentration. Spoke too soon. Now the Ashling, Ashling crowd's chirping now after I said that. Uh, Canal makes both, so extends the Hiller lead by five. Seven two is our score early here in the fourth quarter, uh, first quarter. Oh, it's uh, a tough, quarter. tough pass. Yeah. Actually, it looked like he traveled before he threw that pass, but the Hillers get it back and now into the ball game. Here comes Nick Stanley, the junior guard. He has it. It's Bakari, Stanley, Odell. Zarapuzko and Jimmy Adams. Cross court, it now goes. Bakari inside to Odell, turns but throws it to Stanley. Now goes cross court, almost stolen, but a three point attempt by Zarapuzko is short and it's taken away by Donovan Przinski of the clock. Oh, that's a walk. There's a drive to the bucket. Right hander goes up and in by Feinberg. 
He's got some moves, though, Steve. Oh, they're going to keep an eye. He's going to, you know, for, for Ashland to stay in this game, he's going to probably have something to say about that. And Feinberg had 15 points when these two teams met. And he's yeah, the guy yeah. they go to. Definitely. The Clockers are 5-11 and 11 on the season. And like we said in the open, here's a three ball by Zarapusco. Goes in and out, and it's rebounded by Porter. Porter is double teamed. Now it's almost thrown away, but Feinberg rescues. Now Porter gets it back. Into the corner that Diaz, he throws it up top. Now Porter just saves it from going out of bounds, and it's re rescued by Kyle Walsh, who's into the game for the Clockers. Here's a three ball by Diaz. It rims in and out. Here's Vakari racing up court. Vakari goes to Odell on the baseline. Now back up top, it goes to Zarabusco, and now Vakari drives, goes cross court. And, oh, it's a good save by Stanley. Zarabusco. Inside to a nice pass down low. Adams now goes for a three ball to Stanley. Rims long, but it's rebounded by Odell. Puts it up, class, and good. Well, the up front men, Steve, giving the clockers a little bit of problem on the offensive board, and there's a foul, blocking foul. Yeah, against. well, there's a, you know, they, you can't teach height, as they say, and the, and the, the Hillers have a distinctive advantage there. So, as we've seen in other games, when, when there's uh, that situation, it, over the course of the game, the Hillers can kind of wear teams down, and, and well, it's, it's early here, but right now with a 9-4 lead, it's, it's going, our, going the Hillers' way. Zach Zizitsky checks in now, and the foul was on Zarapusko. His first. And Feinberg looking to drive. Now he does. Puts up a wild right-hander oh. off glass, and it counts. It's a heck of a shot. I, you know, he he initiated the contact, but you know, with with his keeping his body under control, you know, on his left side, and it's sort of a running. Uh, I don't know what you call that, but he it was a great athletic move. I guess you could call that. Well, in uh, trying to get ready for the tournament, Steve. Uh, the, the uh, game has three officials in it, which uh, they do work during the tournament. And so I think that what they do is the last couple of games, they try to get the, the referees used to each other for three of them. So now there's three calling fouls and other calls. And so the clockers cut the lead, the Hiller lead 9-7. Off glass, good, is by Canal. And they have no answer for the inside game of the Hillers right now. Exactly. Here's Porter now, pulls it back up top to Feinberg. He's being pressured by Adams. Now the baseline, Nothing and a there. good steal by Odell. He throws it ahead of the field. Szyzycki. Szyzycki puts it up off the right hand. No good, but it's followed in by Odell. So he's extend the six-point lead. Great finish there. Ooh, almost a walk. <laughs> There's a shot from the foul line by Kyle Walsh. He misses it, and up court comes Stanley. Stanley cross court, it goes to Zizitsky. He drives. Now he throws it back up top to Stanley. Adams now gets it. And the Hill is slow things down. Stanley to Odell. Odell is triple teamed. Jimmy Adams for three. It doesn't hit anything. And Diaz saves it inbounds to Porter. Mitch Porter, the senior guard. The uh, clockers start five guards, Steve. And uh, we don't have any of their heights, but I, I didn't see too many people above six foot two there. There's no, a, neither did I. There's a three ball in and out. That's two good shots by Diaz that went in and out from three. Zizitsky drives. Oh, that's a skate. And he finally has called for the travel. He didn't, you know, it's, that's influenced by the, the crowd a little bit. That happened. That, that, that was a travel. The ref didn't call it immediately. And the Ashland folks uh, let him know about it, and then he called it. It was all very quickly, but that's kind of how it went. And it was the right call, by the way. A minute and 50 to go in the first quarter. The Hillers by six, 13-7. And there's a whistle with a foul on the baseline. We were watching the ball. I didn't see what happened there, but the foul. 23, Dylan Feinberg. Freshman, I'm guessing it's Max, Max's brother, but no, it has to be. Oh, oh, oh blocked man. by Canal. The foul actually goes against Cooper Corby. Oh, I'm sorry, my yep. bad. Yeah, you're uh, I'm on the wrong roster. There's a put back shot, rebounded, and now there's a foul down low as Odell had the ball. 
It was senior night, and I had a senior moment. Just want to fit in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, well, I was just trying He's to work I should have wrote that down <laughs> before I came here. All right, here's uh, the Hillers with a minute and 30 to go in the first quarter. Corby bringing it up. And it goes to Zarapusco back to Corby, goes cross court. Now inside it goes to Canal. Canal is double teamed, and it's a tie up. And it's going to be the clocker's ball. As Diaz did his thing there by tying things up. It's a nice play, good defense on his part, freshman. Clockers bring it up now. This is Luke Nutting now with the ball. Nutting goes to Diaz. Diaz drives the baseline, and Zarabusco is going to get called for a blocking foul. That's going to be his second here in the first quarter. Probably see a substitution. Adams is going to come in for Zizitsky. Zizitsky is going to take a seat. Diaz tries to get it in. Good pressure by Corby, but Walsh was a little taller there. Diaz now dribbling around. He throws up top to Nutting. Nutting to the side now as Matt Gazard is in their game. Diaz drives. Ooh, now push a steal by Corby as he races up court. Corby to Zarapusco. Pulls it back. Adams now to Corby. Corby looking to drive. Goes inside to Odell. Odell is... Has it go through his hands, but Canal's on the baseline. He is triple teamed, throws up a shot. It's no good, but he'll go to the free throw line. Geez, Mike, you know, I was watching uh, Ashland on the other end of the court trying to come up with a, a good shot, and there's this, there's this really hard for them to get through all the height that, uh, that the Hillers are, are presenting to them. And um, they really ha had nothing going on until, you know, the, the shot clock was running down. So we've seen that before when, when like, you know, I, I want to say uh, – might have been Millis or some team where they didn't have a whole lot of height, Norton, and it was just they couldn't do anything. So I think that so far that's kind of what's happening here. Uh, Canal makes uh, both his free throws, extends the Hiller lead to eight. And with 35 seconds to go in the first quarter, Ashland has the ball, driving the baseline as Feinberg throws it inside to Diaz. Diaz skipped around there, the ball's loose. Feinberg with his speed comes back and gets it. Now he looks to drive. Pulls up jumper, wild Ooh. shot that goes in. He's shaking his head. He think he got fouled in. It looked like he might have. This is a heck of a shot. Ten seconds to go. Up top to Rector, who checks in. Down low to Canal, off glass, and good. An easy bucket for the Hillers. Unstoppable, really. And there's a shot at the buzzer. It goes out of bounds and hits our cameraman, John Ritz. Good play by him. As he stops it. So quarter number one comes to a close with the Hillers leading 17-9. And here are the Hiller cheerleaders. The Hiller cheerleaders. This quarter number two gets almost ready to start here. Packed crowd here tonight. The Hillers trying to keep their playoff hopes alive as we talked about in the opener. And there's the uh, pep band in the corner getting ready to play. Well, so far we, uh, we're off to a good start here, Mike. 17 and 9 after one quarter. Max Feinberg almost single handedly keeping Ashland in the game. He must have seven of the nine points. I don't have the exact numbers, but it's something like that. And the Hillers are, you know, off to a good start. A uh, must game for them. You get a long bench. You get keep bringing the people in, fresh bodies. Uh, let's see how the second quarter goes. All right, the Hillers will inbound. They're going from our left to right as we sit in the crow's nest here at the Athletic Center. It's uh, February 12, 2016. There's Canal down the, the drives and it's uh, off the hands, but Rector saves it, tries to throw it in, Jeez. and Canal gets it. Nice play. Rector's still under there. And the 6 7 Rector, uh, sorry, check the 6 10 Rector gets it inbounds. Now here's Corby driving. Goes to three ball to Zarapusco. It's short and it's rebounded by Feinberg. Feinberg throws it up court. And here is the famous number 31. Inside it goes now. Lost ball, and here's Zarapusco. 
He's racing ahead of the field. He almost gets it pulled, but he puts it up off glass. And then a charging foul. Oh, my. Against Zarapusko. I, I, I hate to use the word embellishment, but there was not a lot of contact there. And the, it was certainly a... Um, the Ashland player did a good job kind of creating the illusion, if you will, that there was contact, and he drew the foul. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm I, sorry. I, I, thought it was an, I thought it was an offensive foul. The way That's, Connor I, got up off the too. ground, he thought he was. Sorry, I stand corrected. I'm, ha I'm having a tough night. Oh, no, I said the same thing in the play-by-play -play <laughs> part, Steve. I, he got up looking like he was angry, and I'm like, but that didn't look like an offensive foul, but he misses the free throw. But now Canal is fouled, and it's a second foul against Luke Nutting. Nutting committed that first foul against Zarapusco, who missed his free throw. The Hillers with a 10-point lean. Canal misses his first free throw. He had been perfect. He's taking a seat on the bench is Nutting after he picks up his second. The Clockers are at 17 fouls already here early in the yeah. second quarter. It's a lot of, could be a late night here. And so Canal makes a second, and there's a foul, a blocking foul. You don't hope the assigner of referees isn't here tonight, because if that's the case, Steve, there's going to be there'll be whistle spit flying everywhere here tonight. <laughs> well, they want to probably earn their stripes, so to speak, to get in the playoffs, and I don't know exactly how, what that process is, but here's yeah, it's not not too bad. We we always. Oftentimes, we're rough on the refs. They're doing a good job. Yeah, no doubt. Mitch Porter misses the shot, and the Hillers get it back. Here's a three ball by Corby, oh. and he banks it in. Not sure if he called glass, but it doesn't really matter. The bank was open for business there. Cross court, it now goes to Walsh. Oh, that's a foul. And there's a pushing foul. Jimmy Adams, I think. Might be his third. I think it is. If it is against him, yeah, there's somebody getting off the bench right away. And there's timeout. actually a timeout on the court. So with 6.40 to go here in the first half, the Hillers leading 23-9. to nine. And so far, Steve, the script is going according as planned. You have to win this game, as we said in the opener, for the Hillers to continue in the playoffs. And uh, let me tell you what's up next for this Hopkinton squad. They will go down to Norton on uh, the 22nd, so the week after the break is over. And uh, they, who uh, Hopkinton beat 53-45. to And then the final game of the season, should they get, you know, to that game with the victories, I guess, they will play Westwood. And Westwood just beat Hopkinton this week, 57-43. Uh, so... Uh, on, the, on the road in Westwood, right? Uh, they were coming home. So, so they have a home game. That's right. That's right. good. So, so that'll be, be good. home against Westwood. But, um, I mean, I'm, we're not counting our chickens yet because this is a 23-9 game. And it was actually uh, Ashland who closed out their meeting the last time the Hillers and the Clockers met. Here's a three ball from 31. He hits it. Well, we'd like to give you some props, 31. We'll get his name. Maybe we can uh, do some investigative work at halftime or you maybe it's before then. Right. It goes up top to Rector, Rector down low and it goes through the hands of a clocker, Porter stops play. And uh, Rec uh, sorry, that's uh, Odell is gonna Christian inbound it in. And a bank shot is good. There is extend. Okay, now I know who it is. I heard you guys. Christian Van Cleef. He's instead of wearing 11, he's 31. Which our score sheet has him wearing 11. Turnaround jumper by Feinberg. Rims long, but it's taken away by Walsh. Walsh now to Diaz. He hits a three, and so of his third attempt, he finally makes one, and the Hillers lead by 11. He's a nice player. He's a freshman. Uh, looks like he's got some height on him, and he's uh, got a nice game, too. That was a big hoop. And he's very quick with his hands. A double dribble against uh, Zach Zizitsky, the sophomore guard. And the clockers well, take over. Diaz kind of caused a little chaos there for Zizitsky and uh, caused a turnover. 
Van Cleef is number 31. And misses. Hillers by 10, I should say, 25. 15, the bulbs on the clock. <laughs> you know what's going to happen, Steve? This is my last year doing these, and those are going to be fixed next year. You know just, it. Just in the nick of time, right? Right. Well, I guess I could look on our monitor because Amanda Dings, our graphics person, is doing a pretty good job keeping track. And as the free throw is missed, and it's rebounded by Rector. Kyle uh, Rector, the junior. Here's Vicari driving the baseline. He goes to Canal. Canal, mid-level jump is no good, but Rector puts it up. He's getting blocked, and it's last touch by the Hillers. Went off a Hiller chest down low. But Rector, 6'10", taking it up strong, and he got his shot blocked, I want to say by Diaz, who looks to be in the 6'2", or 3 range. Yeah, from up here, Steve, without the numbers, it's hard to measure because the Hillers are so big. So. He, like you don't get the you know perception exactly. you know and here's stanley now with the curry for three and oh, he hits it one. jack for curry for three senior night and the hill is back up by 13. with 440 to go in the second quarter as a turnaround jumper looks good by feinberg well he's got about 10 points mike at least now this he's a tough customer i remember him from last year too he's good Inside it goes to Odell. He gets it, puts it up off glass, and he is fouled after he puts the bank shot in. Well, no answer I for mean, the Hillers if they get the ball inside clean. Right? That was just a that's a huge mismatch. All due respect to Mitch Porter, who is playing his heart out tonight. Uh, he looks to be in the you know six foot or under uh, category when he's dealing with Austin Odell, is six foot six, and um, there's nothing he could do about that. And he misses the free throw. And so the clock has come up court now. And Porter to Van Cleef for three. And he hits it. He really needed that one. And Christian Van Cleef makes his second three. As yeah. soon as we caught his name, he's hit. he's got two three-pointers. <laughs> so I don't know if that's <laughs> You might be right about that, though. <laughs> Stanley looking to free himself. Now it goes to Odell, who helps him. Now Canal up top. He's looking for the Hillers to move around, and the coaching staff of the Hillers is yelling, move it. Inside to Odell, puts it up off glass, and good. Austin Odell, another bucket inside. A strong move. Up top, it's stolen away. Here comes Zarapusco racing up court. He drives, puts up a floater, no good. It's rebounded, and it's loose, and it goes off of one of the Hillers Canal, and so the clockers take over. 3.28 to go. Helter Skelter a little bit there, but you know, Hillers got to have a 12 point lead. 3.28 left in the half. Up court now, clockers trying to slow things down here. Donovan Przinski checked into the game. Walsh looking to make a move. He gets it back. Mid-level jumper. Rims long, and it's rebounded by Canal. Canal gives it up to Vicario. Goes cross court to Zarapusco. Thought about a three, but he thought a better idea. He went to Odell off glass, and good. Austin Odell is scoring at will inside. Yeah, that's just a unfair mismatch in size, and, and he, Odell's just taking full advantage of it. There's a three ball by Van Cleef. It's missed. And three on two if they got it. Here's throw up court. Here's Vicari down the lane. Puts it up off glass and good. Boy, he had trouble with it. Good recovery. He had it attached to his hip and then pulled it off it. Vicari has a jump shot by Feinberg. He misses. Kind of forced that one. And he looks at the ref like, I can't believe he didn't call that. But it looked like a wild shot to me. Cross court it goes. Stanley back up top. Vicari now to Zarapusco for three. Rims in and out. Rebounded by Matt Walsh, it's a, fa a Kyle Walsh, it's a fast pace now, Steve. Up and down. Clockers and the Hillers racing back and forth. Walsh turnaround jumper is long, it's rebounded by Odell. Odell to Stanley. Stanley to Zarapusco, he gets it back though, Stanley does, and now he calls a play. Zarapusco looking to go inside. Feinberg trying to guard Odell, but here's Canal to the bucket, he makes it. 
Doesn't matter which one they pick and timeout yeah, on the court by Coach Mark Champagne of the Clockers. They could have, he could have called that timeout a couple of possessions ago because the momentum had already swung by then and now it's an 18 point lead. And the Hillers are just meandering their way in for layups almost without any kind of uh, pushback from the, the clockers. Not that, not, that, not that they're not trying, it's just I don't think they have the physical means to deal with their height, as I said. And uh, the Hillers are hitting everything. Yeah, you're right. Uh, one of the issues, you know, they are respecting a little bit of the outside game for the Hillers, but really, you're right, Steve. They're, the Hopkinton forwards are getting easy buckets. I mean, really easy buckets. And, you know, fans look at their heights. You know, you, what do you got? Wrecker, 6'10", Blanchard, 6'7", Canal, 6'5", Odell, 6'6". And uh, that should be uh, a money time in there, you know. And then when you look at some of the other folks that, you know, Vakari, six feet, Stanley, six feet. And Jimmy Adams, I forgot, six two. He's there, you know, they're all above the six foot. Sazitsky, six feet. There's their smaller players are six feet, and I don't know what the well you can just see for yourself what's going on. So it's a uh, just under two minutes left in the in the first half. This could this could be a blowout here, or Ashland needs a couple baskets to, to stay in the game and quick. All right, here's Van Cleef. Goes down low, up top to Diaz. It goes off his hands. It's going to be last touch by the Hillers. With a minute and 34 to go in the first half. Here on senior night. Diaz, good hands there. And gets it back now. Porter now trying to go two, to Diaz. Two seconds. Diaz throws it off glass. No good. It's rebounded by Odell. Odell gives it to Stanley. Stanley pulls it back. Now goes to Corby. Corby to the side. To Zizitsky. Corby gets it back now. He goes through the legs. He's waiting for Hiller to clear a little bit. Now he goes to Stanley inside the canal. Down low. Pump fakes. And he is going to get called for steps. He had the first fake, Steve. And then uh, He'll when he tried the second step, second fake, that's when he walked. I'm impressed by Guillermo Diaz of, of Ashland. He's he's covering the point guard at the top of the key, and then when Canal goes up for the shot, he comes down and really disrupted Canal's shot. And he's all over the place. Yeah, he's a, as you said before, he's a really sharp-looking freshman. As the ball was tipped off his hands, and so Hopkinton gets it back with 50 seconds to go in the second quarter. Corby calls out a play. A lot of men on the baseline for the Hillers. Looking to set up Ordell. They go to him, but it's a little bad pass. And here come the clockers. Van Cleef now drives, puts up a Jeez, scoop nice play. shot, missed it, and it's rebounded. Almost went down. By Blanchard. And Blanchard throws it away. Now Diaz has it in the key. The ball's loose on the floor. Everybody's dying for it. Bodies flying everywhere. And there's going to be. I don't know what a, you call that? We've got a tie up, I think. Okay. Nope. I don't oh, think it was a foul. I don't know. Travel, maybe a travel. Yeah, I think it might have been have a travel. It to be something because the clock was turned off. It didn't matter. Yeah. There's 18 seconds to go in the second quarter. And the inbounds. Corby now slows things down. They're going to hold for the last shot. They hope. And they're going to make a move now. It's eight seconds to go. Ooh, that's and, a foul. Yeah, it's going to be a. Yeah, he kind of cleared him out. Yeah. Corby kind of cleared him out. It's an offensive foul against Corby. With six seconds to go. And here's Krasinski now. Long three by Porter Rim short. And the quarter comes to an end. Well, a really good second quarter for this Hopkinton team as they extend now to a halftime lead of 38 20. And uh, we're going to be back with the second half in just a moment.
winning number for the Fifty Fifty Raffle. All right, we get ready for second half action with the Hillers leading 38-20. Steve, the big story of the first half, the Hillers went on a 21-11 to run there in that second quarter, and that's how they got to this 18-point lead. Well, no question, and they, you know, they, they, the majority of those 21 points were in, of the layup persuasion, and, uh, and it was just really setting up their not fast break layups, just working the ball around and then just taking to the hoop. And, and uh, they really dominate that second quarter. Well, the two big fellas for the Hillers, Nick Canal had 13 and Austin O'Dell with 12. Jack Vicari had six. And then Cooper Corby had three. And then two apiece for Zarapusco and uh, Jimmy Adams. And, Steve, you pointed out during the game, you, you know, you thought uh, Max Feinberg was leading the team. And, of course, he was. He had nine. And then uh, Christian Van Cleef. Had a pair of threes, and uh, Kyle Walsh with two, and Guillermo Diaz hit a three, and that's how the Clockers got to their 20. A 21 to 11 run here in the second quarter, and that's where we stand right now as you're looking at the student body of Hopkinton here on senior night. The place is packed, as we mentioned before the game actually started. This is not only senior night, but it is also youth basketball appreciation night. And uh, if you wore a basketball shirt, you got admission here free. Lucky them. And here we go. All right. So the Clockers now will have the ball to start here the second half. And they had had to come out of the locker room with an answer to the two big guys. And they're staying spread out now. The clocker is now inside it goes, and it goes off the hands, and Adams picks it up. Adams races up court, now pulls on the brakes, and gives it to Ficari. Cross court to Zarapusco is open for three, and it rims long, but it's rebounded by Adams. Adams on the baseline. Throws it to Canal, pull-up jumper is good. More of the same. Patience on offense and uh, work for a little three-footer. Three well, Jimmy Adams pulled down the rebound as a three ball that goes short. It's off the hands of... Vicari can't control it. Feinberg has it now. And he gives it over to Van Cleef. He drops it in. I think that was a two. Yep. And a drive by Vicari. Throws it to Adams who drives. Up top to Corby. Slows things down. The senior. Cooper Corby get, gets it back to the other senior. Vicari. It's an all-senior lineup, I think, out there again. Zarapusco hits a three. And the Hillers extend to the 21-point lead. Baseline uh, kicked ball by Adams. This goes off the cheerleader. To Sarah Pusco. I mean, you know, again, they worked the clock down about 15, 12 seconds. Got four or five passes right around, and, and uh, Connor just squared up beautifully. It was a great, great three-pointer. Feinberg is fouled. And he gets angry at the slightest foul, though. It's like, okay, the whistle blew. You're good. You're, you're, you know? <laughs> Well, I think though he's got the feels like he's got the world in his shoulders at the moment. He's down by 20. His team is down by 21 points, and they he's going to have to get very hot from three-point land for them to get back in this game. And he has it has almost has it taken away by Zarapusco. There's a three-ball by Van Cleef, and he, in and out tipped up. Porter gets it, but then Adams takes it off the floor. Corby puts on the brakes. Now goes to the middle to Adams. Adams to Zarapusco for three, and oh, he boy. hits it. Connor with a pair of threes here to second half. Senior night. And it extends 
to a 24 point lead for Hopkinton. Well, the big men have answered the bell here in the first half and now a couple of the guards are sparking the team in the second half. Oh, Van Cleef is oh. hammered and he's fouled. What and, a play. He, and he makes it. Jeez, he ball fake three of the Hillers in the air and somehow kept his cool and drew some contact and I don't know how he got the ball in the hoop but it was a, it was a heck of a shot. Now he makes and he's going to try to hit the th conventional three point play. I think I need a lot of those to get back in the game here. And the foul was on Vakari. Boy, Hillers just stand around. They, yeah. I think they were expecting another shot there. <laughs> they got lucky. At yeah, exactly. All right, Corby now to Sarapusco. Look the shot, but this time they defended him. Now he gets it back. Inside it goes to Canal on the baseline. Avoids the trouble oh, and he boy. puts it in. Playing above the rim on that. There is no answer for the inside game. It has Feinberg for three and he doesn't hit anything. Canal up court, it comes hard and the ball taken out of bounds as you could hear Coach Keen screaming, push, 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 as Robido had to knock it away. And Sarah Pusco for feeling three. feeling it. Oh, went off the backboard, <laughs> the side of the backboard. Why not? You kind of got on a roll there. Van Cleef drives. And he is blocked by Canal. And here's Cor Corby throws it, but he tried to hit Canal ahead of the field, but he couldn't. Get some fresh bodies in here, Mike. This 24-point lead, five minutes left in the third quarter. Uh, yeah, get, get people people on the Hiller side are feeling pretty good at the moment. Stanley checks in along with Zazitsky, and then Odell stays in with. Uh, Odell comes in and then Canal stays in. It's, uh, blocking foul on the baseline. Nick Canal, the senior, is going to go to Cornell University to play football, we hear. Uh, geez, that's pretty good, pretty good uh, launch from, from Hoppington High into Cornell. His Diaz, he found himself open for a minute, but then he drove to the bucket and Kyle Rector was there and he had to do a quadruple pump to avoid getting blocked. And it was last touched as it went out of bounds. Actually, I think maybe they gave a foul to Diaz there. Yeah, they did. Yep. Yep. And Stanley puts on the brakes to Zarapusco. Cross court it goes to Odell. Odell had a really good first half also. He dropped in 12. Zarapusco looking to give it to him. He does. Inside it goes to Rector. Spins. Now goes back out top. Good play. Zarapusco for three. Doesn't hit anything, but Diaz picks it off the air. And now it throws up court. Stanley there Ooh. to defend. Nice play by him. And it was last touch by the clockers. Well, sort of a death. You know, there's still a lot of time left in the game, but when you're down by 24 points, you a little bit of a desperation situation. So the, the clockers are playing full, full court, pressure D, and just uh, Diaz just drew a foul or got, got called for the foul. Yeah, well, one, of, one of the rules um, that we mentioned, I think, in one of our broadcasts, Steve, is that there's no hand checking anymore. It takes everything away from the referee that there's no, you know, oh, out of bounds. So Diaz got <laughs> called for the hand check, and he really just had his yep. forearm on the lower body of the Hiller, but uh, that's a that's a rule now. And it's his third foul as well, which is not, you know, not great for for them. He's he's a big integral part of this uh, Ashland team at the moment. He knew he was in trouble. He went inside just there, and uh, Rector was right on top of him. That's a little bit intimidating. And Feinberg throws up a wild shot. It's no good, and it's rebounded by Odell. Here's Zarapusco. I mean, uh, ch check that. Yeah, Zarapusco. He tried to throw it to. Zizitsky, but it goes off of him and out of bounds. And so the clockers will take over. 4.02 to go in the third quarter. You're watching HCAM's coverage of Hopkinton High School boys basketball. I'm Mike Prate with Steve Spector and our crew of John Ritz, Bob Hamilton, Mike Terosian, who's producing and on camera, our director, Tom Dings, and our graphics person, Amanda Dings. There's a three ball that goes in. Nice shot. That was uh, that was Spencer Robidoux who made that. He's had a couple of those tonight. 
And Hiller's in a must-win situation to keep their tournament hopes alive. And so far, they've answered the call. Here's a three ball by Stanley, and Whoa. he hits it. Good. Nick Stanley, the junior guard, buries a three from the side. It's a great shot, had plenty of time. Hiller's back up by 24. And they have really answered the bell here. Here's a, a shot by Feinberg. He is fouled. And the foul is going to go against Corby. He thinks he was going straight up. And it looked kind of odd. Well, I think, you know, Feinberg at this point is feeling like he's got to just kind of launch it uh, just largely, and maybe not at every, every time he touches the ball. But in that particular play, he, he sort of forced it up, drew the contact from Corby. And Corby picks up his third. The first free throw by Feinberg is good. Hillers with a 7-10 record up against a 5-11 Ashland team. And up court, Rector has it. And he is fouled by Feinberg on a reach. Big crowd here tonight. Stands are packed. Been pretty well behaved for the most part, I would say. We've, we've been to some games over the years in Ashland. It gets a little crazy. Oh, bad uh, pass. That gym's a little tighter, and it's a little louder there. Uh, yeah. There's a little more room for the, the noise to get dispersed here in the uh, athletic center here in Hoppington. But nevertheless, great great energy in the building tonight. And Porter now goes to Feinberg. Feinberg looking to drive. He is triple team back up top. It goes to Robidu for three, and he makes it. Well, we don't want, yeah, that's a, that's a nice shot. That's two, two three-pointers in about a minute's time for him. For him. Score 51-32. Krasitsky loses the handle, and he tries to save it from himself. And it goes out of bounds, and so the Hills will make a substitution into the ball game. And now comes Vakari. Good hustle by Krasitsky, just a little bit of... Found himself in a tough spot. He tried to recover from it. It was got a little helter-skelter there for him. He's had a great year. Really tough deep defender. You know, adds a lot of spark. He's just taking a break for a, for a minute. Well, here's substitute four players in, uh, three players in. Rather. Here's Diaz driving, and it is blocked by Rector. Put his hand up and got it. Now he's looking to get rid of the ball, and he does. Good play by Rector, under control. Zarapusco now holds up top. Cross court it goes to Vicari. Vicari goes inside oh. the record. They're trying to give him the ball, but it's stolen away. And up court it comes. Oh, behind the back dribble. Oh, nice play uh -oh. by uh, Spencer Rubido, but it's going to be a back court violation against the Clockers. A little run and gun there. You know, I can't blame him at 20 points down or 19, whatever it is, and uh, they're just trying to push the ball up as quickly as they can. He was a little out of control on that play. 2.06 to go in the third quarter. The Hillers, as Steve just said, up by 19. Here's Zarapusco for three. It's no good, but a foul on the Hopkins. Looks like on Rector. And they're calling a blocking foul. I kind shot. of pushed him from, the, from behind. Okay. It was a non. Uh, you saw it? Off ball, yep. Okay. Two minutes to go here in the third. Luke Nutting now gives it to Diaz. Diaz side jumper for three, in and out. Rebounded by Rector. Rector has it stolen by Feinberg. He fouls him. And that's just, uh, you know, Kyle need, needing to hang on to the ball a little bit there, a st little strength there, but I don't think he realized Feinberg was behind him. Yeah, and he's kind of shifty, Feinberg is, you know. He kind of caught, caught him off guard. Rector's got, you know, Next year, looking ahead a little bit, still, still plenty of time this year for him to have a big impact. But next year, when some of the seniors uh, graduate, you know he's 6'10 now. Maybe you add another inch. What doesn't really matter when you're 6'10. And uh, if he can fill out and stay focused and getting better, he could have a huge senior year next year. Feinberg makes one of two from the free throw line. Now Corby races up court, and he goes to Canal. Canal drives the baseline off glass and good. But Canal really looks sharp tonight. I mean, his body movement has been great. Him and Odell along the baseline have looked solid. Yeah, there's, they're creating, creating some really good shots from them. Even when there's not a lot of space, they're just using their bodies and their, their height to, to take advantage. That was a three ball for Luke Nutting. And 
It's now 53-36 with a minute and 12 to go in the third. Inside the canal, he's triple team, but he goes to Rector. Rector gets it, but he's fouled as he tried to catch a pass. And that will be the Hillers taking the ball out of bounds underneath their own basket. And Bakari will do the job, put it, trying to get it in. He goes inside to Canal, who gets it. Now he's has it taken away by Feinberg, but he tries to go behind the back and has it stripped. Here's Canal. He is fouled on the drive to the basket. Well, that time Feinberg got a little too fancy for himself, and as he went behind his back, right, he... Yeah, I, I think it was, was it Feinberg or whoever it was? Uh, Might have been a rap, Rabidou. Uh, certainly, that's one of the... In, in, in my younger days in high school, I would have been on the bench if I had done that. Well, uh, my coach would have just it would be the yank. It would be a big quick a quick hook, as they say. Back in our day, they you got in trouble for going between your legs. Right, exactly. And now it's a standard thing to free yourself. <laughs> a missed shot as Diaz gets the rebound on the floor, but a good hands and up court it goes to Walsh who nice makes play. it. Kyle Walsh, the junior. Here's Corby still racing up court. Now he pulls it back. With 35 seconds to go in the quarter. 24 point leads down to 15. Oh, Ashland has cut it. Adams. Good deep by Ashland. They're not, they're not going away. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Canal pump fakes up and no good. And it's loose on the That's floor. That's a foul, I think. Um, Canal's going to get called for the football play there. Might as well get your money's worth. He got all of that one. You're right, Steve. 15-point lead. The, the Hillers were up by 24 and at I some point in this quarter. Yeah. 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 I think it's yeah. a one-and-one one. Yeah, you're right. Do they, they realize that yet? They do now. And the Hiller faithful's got to be a little nervous here. I know 15 sounds like a lot, but in a quarter of uh, high school basketball. All you need is one or two players to catch a little fire, and this guy... Uh, Spencer Rabadou is, uh, you know, I don't want to jinx him, but he's on fire uh, this this third quarter. He's got a couple three-pointers. He's he, he's kind of brought him back into the game here a little bit. And a little free throw. He will cut the lead to 13, but he misses it. Now Adams gets the rebound. Uh, Sarah Pusco comes back, and he pushes the ball up court. Now he puts on the brakes. Calls out a play. A uh, bad pass by Odell. He tried to hit. Adams going down the baseline. It goes off his foot out of bounds. And so with four seconds to go in the quarter, the clockers will get a chance to inbound. Two, one, and gonna launch it. And that's gonna count. Ooh. Well, that was a slow finger on the clock over there, it seemed like. <laughs> well, quarter number three comes to a close. The Hillers leading 53-39. Here come the Hiller cheerleaders again. Tri-Valley League champs, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. They, they win every year. Great job by the cheerleaders. And the clockers answered back that Hiller run of 21 to 11 in the second quarter. And they scored 19 points here in that third quarter. So the Hillers 15. So we get ready for quarter number four and we might as well talk about it now Steve a win tonight keeps that Hiller playoffs alive and what's going to happen for Hopkinton next is if they should win this game they will go on the road to Norton and right after the break is over the uh, the President's Day break I guess or what it winter February, break, yep, February, February break yep. and uh, they will go up against uh, a Norton team that they beat and uh, then they will, uh, they beat them actually by seven. And then they will uh, host for the final game of the season a Westward team that just beat them last week, 57-43. Hillers are averaging 50 points a game, but they are giving up 54. And tonight, they're over their average. And I don't think uh, the clockers in a quarter are going to get over the Hiller points against average. Well, Corby has it taken away, and it's a tie-up, and it'll be. This Spencer Rabadou, he's 
He's a stocky kid, and he's got some quickness and strong kid, and he's uh, got some skills. He's really brought them back into the game. And the Hillers trying to stave off a major run here. And there's a three ball by Van Cleef. It's short, it's rebounded, and Corby comes up with it. Corby up court. He's got two men open. Canal fakes, and he is fouled as he was held on the arm. And uh, Luke Nutting thinks that he had ball there. I, I check that. Is that Nutting? Let me see. No, check that. It's uh, Robidu. Yep, that was uh, he had. Corby had a choice of two, two players down there. Uh, and, uh, you know, there was a basically a, a 2 on 0 and then the, hill, the, the clockers came back and, you know, there was a foul there. Rubido, no shot. Rubido picks his fourth foul up. Inside it goes to Odell, who puts it off glass. Nice inbounds play when you need a bucket. All right, the clockers are inside it goes to Walsh. He Jeez, puts up a nice, nice floater. That's good. Quick release. He, he didn't have a lot of time, the window, to get that shot off, and he had a couple of tall six foot six players in front of him, and he got the shot off. That was a nice play. Well, Canal tried to get it into Odell, but he threw it behind him a little bit, and so it's a turnover. And with a 14 point lead, the Clockers have the ball. Rubido now with it, fakes. Inside it goes to Feinberg. Turnaround jumper. Rims long and it's rebounded by Canal. Took it away from two players. One of his own. And now uh, Adams races up court. Now it gives it back to Corby. Corby to Adams. Now Zarapusco inside to Odell. He's f pushed from behind by the junior Kyle Walsh. That should be a one and one I think. Yeah, you're right. And now this was a bugaboo against the Clockers the last time, Steve. If I remember correctly, the Hillers in that game had real trouble making free throws down at Ashland. And there's a missed shot. Uh, 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 Canal uh -oh. takes it, and he puts it up and in. And then they also, if I remember correctly, the, Cl the Hillers only scored two field goals in the fourth quarter against the Clockers. Yeah, they so they didn't make free throws, and they didn't make shots. So... The score is a little better for the Hillers here tonight, but they're up by 16. Coach Keen pushing them. Corby now. To inside it goes to Canal. Pump fakes, puts it off glass, Ooh, and nice, good. Nice spin. He didn't really have a great angle, but he used, he spun the ball off the backboard to make that shot work for him. Here's a three ball by Rubido. It was long. Ooh, it's that's rebounded by Adams. It got hammered on the head. But ref, ref let that one go. That's what boys drives, plays, and say. he is blocked, and he looks at the ref instead of going to get the ball. Good hustle. And Porter puts on the brakes now. He goes over to Van Cleef. Inside it goes to Walsh. Turnaround jumper oh, is good. Got a shooter's touch there. And Kyle Walsh has had a nice second half here. Here's a drive by Adams off the backboard, and good. Boy, took it strong on the baseline yeah. in reverse, and it's timeout Ashland. With a 61-43 lead, the Hiller Pep Band, you can hear him. I tell you, there's a lot of scoring going on uh, first few minutes of the half, uh, half, first few minutes of the quarter. And uh, extending the lead, that used to be 14 points, now 18 points. And it's looking good at the moment. And uh, again, a lot of energy in the, in the building, and the band's going, and get Cheerleaders going, the kid, a lot of kids running around. Beautiful, you know, wonderful to be part of this uh, the senior night tonight. H. Cam's coverage of Hopkinton High School boys basketball is on your station tonight. And if you'd like this or any other program in the station shows, please go to their website, hcam.tv, and you can purchase this and also look up the schedule of the rebroadcast of this game. Girls winning tonight as they keep their season going. They have already made the tournament. The girls 54-40 winners over the clockers here. It was a doubleheader night. And they improved their record to 12-5 and five on the season. So they're Whoa. in the tournament. A little, a little carry there, would you say, Mike? Well, looked that way to me, but 
They got three referees out yeah. there. They don't need two more, right? Exactly. Well, they've, they <laughs> Here's Zizitsky driving. He puts it off glass. Oh. He's fouled, and he will go to the free throw line to shoot two. That was a good take by Zizitsky. Uh, he he kind of made his mind up around half court. He's going to take it in for the layup and definitely drew some contact. And he went up with the left hand and almost went down. He's got two shots. Zach, a sophomore six-footer. He's a left-handed shooter. And he makes the first. Gillis looking to get back up by 20 here. Clockers usually have been a pretty good squad over the years against Hopkins. He misses the second. But they had their troubles this year. They were only 5-11. and 11. Yeah, I think they're, they're, they're lacking. Well, we've said it a couple times. They could use a big man or two. They don't really have any of them. And they have people play, kind of filling that role. As Robido looked to fake a, a shot because he had the 6'10 record Ooh, in front of him. It's Porter, senior. Yeah, Porter buries the foul line jumper. There's Vakari now. And Nick is pressured now. He throws it over to Zizitsky, but a timeout on the court as the Hillers are not happy, or Hiller coaching staff, I should say, not happy with the ball movement. So with 15 seconds on the shot clock, the Hillers call a timeout. 4.21 to go in the fourth quarter. You'd like to think that Coach Keene is happy with the, the score sheet at this point with 17-point lead. But as you said, something something wasn't right. Maybe just trying to gather them, maybe make a, make a couple of substitutions, get some other folks in the game. But, you know, barring any major change, uh, the Hillers are going to, you know, uh, take their their eight and ten record. I don't want to get too far ahead, but they got to, you know, we got to finish the deal tonight. But they're it, it looks like they're taking care of business, and Ashland is going to have to pull a miracle out of their hat to, to pull this one out. Now this is a 17-point lead for Hopkinton with just over four minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Now there's 15 seconds on the shot clock after the timeout. Bakari throws it into Stanley. Stanley looking to get it inside the canal. Robodeau defended him a little bit better there. And now it gets it. Foul a mid-level jumper. No good. He gets his own rebound back. Puts it up off glass. No good. But he's fouled. And canal will go to the free throw line. Boy, that's just a tough matchup. You know, uh, it's not just the height. These, the, you know... Canal, he's an athletic guy, very well coordinated, and um, he's jumping over people. And you get to rely on, uh, for the most part, in that particular play. Well, number 20 got the foul, uh, Matt Gazzard, I guess, but it largely Spencer Rabadou's kind of banging bodies with him all night, and that's a tough matchup. There's about a six inch difference there. Well, Canal misses both free throws. So Porter now brings it up. Diaz, Porter gets it back, now looking to spring somebody free. The Hills are in a zone. Yes, Feinburn looking to drive on Stanley, but he played good defense. Robido with a three, and he makes it. Well, the Hiller, the uh, clockers won't go away quietly as a three ball was made. Stanley inside the canal, spins, goes down the baseline, puts it up off glass, and good boy. Nice soft touch off the Very top nice. of the glass. There's a three ball by Feinberg, and he oh. makes a three. Pair of threes now for the clockers. It is a 13-point lead. Timeout. Oh, check that. There's a foul. Number five. Yep. Par Par Porter. And it's his third. And the Clockers are in the double bonus. The Hillers are in the double bonus now, so they will shoot a pair of free throws every time they get fouled. With 3.22 to go in the fourth quarter. And Stanley misses the first. You know... It, it, and I hope I didn't speak too soon. I really do. But, you know, the 13-point the, the lead is, is still a good spot. But, you know, that being said, just to get ready for the playoffs, these guys got to hit their free throws coming down. The, la the, last, the last three minutes of the game, they got to hit them. And Stanley misses the second, but it's rebounded by uh, the Clockers. They've got a number 35 in the game now. They don't have him. 
There's a drive pull up by St uh, Feinberg. He misses it and Rector picks it off the air. Gives it to Stanley who slows things down. And he throws it away, Stanley, oh. but so does Porter. Throws it over our cameraman's head, John Ritz. He had a better play earlier, Mike. The ball went to him, and he did. He, he took one step. Yeah, that one he didn't even go for. But yeah, he's, still, he's doing a heck of a job on the camera. He didn't. He didn't die for that one. I'm about to talk about that one with him later. All right, three minutes to go. I digress. St <laughs> Stanley to Canal, and he is hammered on the floor, but he's going to shoot two free throws. And I'll tell you, it's a strategy that worked with the clockers last time these two teams met. They fouled the Hillers, and I believe. I can't even quote the number, but I know it wasn't great yeah, right. from the free throw line. And Canal misses the first. Well, a, a, as you know, Mike, free throws can be contagious. If everyone's hitting them, they, you just kind of pile it on. But you know, all of a sudden, that when you start going like three for ten, and, and that, that rim gets a little tighter. Oh, my and goodness. I'm, I should, I'm going to stop talking during the free throws. Canal <laughs> misses the second. The clockers within 13 now. With two minutes and 40 seconds to get 45 seconds to go. All right, Porter calls out a play. Hillers are in a looks like a two-three zone. Steve. Yep. Here's Active. A three, here's a three ball by Rubido, and he makes it. And now, I'll tell you, that's his but at least his fourth three-pointer. As Canal, he turns around, he has it there taken away, and here come over. the what clockers. Feinberg pulls up for a three, that misses was, it. That was a force. A Canal. Hillers at one point in this second half led by 24 points. They now are up by 10. And Stanley has it go off his leg, and it's going to be clock or ball. Well, uh, I'm afraid to jinx anybody. I'm not going to say a word in the free throw line, Mike. But anyway, 10 points. You've got to give the clockers, clockers credit. Whether they come all the way back or not, they have hung around for sure. They have had the better second half. Definitely. And here's Diaz looking to drive. Here's a three ball. It rims long, but it's rebounded by Canal. He protects it. Now he gives it to Adams. Adams gets over the midcourt line and gives it to Corby, and he slows things down. A minute and 45 to go. Adams to Canal. Puts it on the floor, drives, puts up a right-hander, and it drops in. A huge basket they for Hopkinton. Momentum swing. Ooh. And the clockers just threw it away. Feinberg comes in after a brief rest because he was gassed there. And Hiller's back up by 12. Cross court it goes to Odell. He gets it. He puts on the brakes. Gives it to Adams. Adams drives. He tried to go inside. Now there's oh Canal wide open, and he is fouled. Oh. Diaz came back, and now he, uh, sorry, check, he's blocked, and now he's fouled. Good block by uh, by Diaz, and uh, again it's free throw sort of making time. You got to have something. I mean, they haven't really done much at the free throw line. This is, again, it's if nothing else, it, I think they I think they're going to be able to hold off the clockers. But let's hit a couple. Let's let's get it going here. As you know, some some of those uh, Saturday morning practices. Well, back in the, our, our days, we would have if we had a bad bad night at the free throw line, we. Some of, the, some of those practices still going on from shooting free throws and do the sprints. Well, Diaz has fouled out as he picked up his fifth. And into the ball game for him is Justin Burns, the senior guard. And Diaz. Canal misses a free throw. Diaz, he had a good, I gotta keep an eye on him. A freshman, I think his sister is on the vars, uh, varsity girls, had a knee injury, we hope she's okay. Here's the second free throw by Canal, goes Goodness in gracious. and out. 12-point lead with a minute and 10 to go. Porter now out top. It goes to inside. It goes to Feinberg. Turn around, jump oh. off glass is good. 10-point lead. Zarapusko with the ball. Hillers no hurry now. They're up by 10. And a uh, bad pass. It. Not necessary, really. And up court it goes. Nice recovery. Boy. Rubidu thought about taking the three. Oh, Inside a, pass is stolen by Canal. And that should do it right there. They, they, unless they launched another three, I think that's going to do it. All right, this time Sarabusco slows things down, and he's going to get fouled. And that's the guy you want the ball in ha his hand because Connor is a pretty good free throw th shooter. 
He had a couple big three-pointers earlier in the night. I lost track of how many points he's got, but uh, certainly good team effort tonight. 35 seconds left, 10-point lead. All right, so for Feinberg, that is his third, and so Zarapusko makes the first. Yeah, he's got a nice stroke, Steve, if you watch Connor shoot. Yep. You know, he Simple. Less is more. Not a lot of movement. Consistent. Natural shooter's got a really good touch. And he Same. makes them both. Same thing. Consistency. All right, Hiller's back up by 12 with 30 seconds to go. And so Hopkinton is going to keep their tournament hopes alive. Cross court it goes off the hands of Corby with 21 seconds to go. The Hillers are going to improve to an 8-10 and 10 record. And Stanley checks back in for Corby. And now Rector comes in. As Canal comes out. And now here comes Zizitsky. I think the seniors, the seniors, that, seniors yep. are getting a, an applause by the crowd as they come out. Cross court it goes to 35. We don't have him. Porter down low. Porter gets it back. Down low it goes to Burns, who takes a shot, but he's fouled. And I think he's going to go to the free throw line. Well, a good night here in Hopkinton yep. as with 6.7 six, seven, 6 seconds to go, Hopkinton is going to keep their playoff hopes alive. First free throw is no good by Justin Burns, the senior. Definitely a fun night, Mike. I got to do two games in one night. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm ready for dinner. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a fun night uh, with the girls, with Tim, and then doing the boys with you tonight. Looks like we uh, we pulled this one out and held, held the, the clockers off, which is great. And it's going to be uh, Zizitsky who dribbles it out, and that's going to do it. Well, the Hillers answered the bell here. They needed a win to keep their playoff hopes alive, and they do. And it was really in thanks to a second quarter run where they went 21 to 11 in that second quarter. The Clockers made it close, Steve. And uh, luckily uh, for the Hillers, there was no more time on the clock because the Hillers were having trouble here in the fourth quarter making free throws. No question. They, they, the Hillers stretched the lead 48 to 24 at one point, 24 point lead. And, you know, uh, give, give the Clockers credit. They never they never uh, rolled over. They, they fought back. They outscored the Hillers in the second half a little bit. I think they were losing by 11. So that's uh, Great, great Friday night basketball game. Two rival towns. A lot of fun tonight. Well, the Hillers will be up uh, at down in Norton to continue their playoff hopes alive on the 22nd of February. They're going to have a break for the week. And then if they should win that, you will be able to watch on HCAM TV when they come home on the 24th against the Westwood Wolverines. Well, that's going to wrap up HCAM's coverage of Hopkinton High School boys basketball. For Steve Spector, I'm Mike Prate with once again the final score. The Hillers 68 and the Ashland Clockers 57. Thanks for watching, everybody.